right to another video. Today I'm going to be see if I can uh, repair my little Karcher K2. Um, it started basically pulsing, doing the old dreaded pulse where usually the motor or there's a leak somewhere and then water started flying out of the actual sides here. Um, so I'm hoping it's just a crack on the inlet or the outlet and not actually the motor itself. But you can get pretty much nearly all the parts for these. Um, so I should be able to order the parts that I need all being well. I do abuse this poor little thing really. Um, I did take the filter out earlier. Just basically unscrew that there. That comes out and I did give it a good clean because that was really dirty. Well. I don't think it was stopping water flow, it's just, just general dirt and things you get in the uh, lime scale and things you get in the water these days. And they do recommend you clean that on a regular basis, which I haven't done for probably two or three years. So that's all done now, so that seems fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the back off. So we're going to need some Torx head screw drivers to remove those, which I believe I've got in my set here. Let's have a look what size we need. I think it's probably going to be a 20. Let's have a look. No, it's a 15. Yes, yeah, so it's a T15. It's going to be easier with a socket, I think. And an extension as well. So we'll just crack these open, see what we've got inside. I do recommend if you are actually taking one of these apart to actually take plenty of photos so you know exactly which part goes where. Or oh, do I do and take a video? Yes, this is protect from frost, and I think it did get really, really cold for a few days in my uh, garage. And they, when there's water left in there, the frost can actually crack the plastic. So that's probably what's happened. But each spares um, I use on the internet a lot. They do. I hope you can hear me over this ratchet. They do a lot of uh, washing machine parts and things like that. I've used them quite a bit to rebuild the cooker and the washing machine. They do a full range of parts for these. Some have to be special ordered. It's easy, it's quieter that way. Screws, put them in the box. Let's get a little pot. Little paint pot. There you are, the pot. We'll put all the screws in there. And I think I've got to take that handle off. I think that just slides off. On there. That's all right. The handle doesn't have to come off. It's good. There we go. Okay, well, what I will do as well is I'll give it a really good clean inside and out. There's some of this dirt and debris out there. Really smarten it up a little bit. So a lot of these just go and motors go, and you can actually replace pretty much nearly every single part of these. A lot of people just as soon as they don't work, they just replace them. I think this was only cheap anyway, it's only about £100, but if you can buy a part which is only £15, it's going to be a lot better than forking out for a new one. There's a part number there, so I'm going to need that. So just give that a wipe. And glass cleaner. Because this is the basic, basic model. Move the case to one side, we'll give that a clean later. Right, so now we've got the case off, we can have a proper look. The actual inlet and outlet does look in really good condition actually. So I think I'm just going to go and quickly run some water through it and see where the actual water's coming from. So I just hooked the hose pipe up just to the inlet here and water was flowing through here quite nicely. There's no leaks on the inlet and outlet like I thought, but there is a leak 
from the inside here. I think it's coming from the actual main body of the pump. So I'm going to take this outer casing off and then we'll have a look inside, see where the actual leak is coming from. Now it looks like it's just clips on here. I'm just going to pull off and just get a little screwdriver. All right, just push them down. Releases that. Something like that. So there's the main motor there. That's a power lead. There we go. Okay. So now I think I'll just pop that off. I'm going to come off. Oh, no more water still in there. I think there's another filter in there as well. Maybe not. No water. Let's get a bit of cloth. Right, so I think I'm going to take this section off here first. Okay, so I've got the inlet and outlet off. That was quite difficult to get off the actual outlet. The inlet was really easy, just unscrewed. So now I think this section here has got to come off so I can get access to the actual pump to see where the actual water's coming from. Again, it's a Torx. What size is that? T25. I think this section in here is actually sprung loaded. So I'm going to have to be quite careful taking that off. I believe this pump is full of oil, so I've got to be really careful not to spill it all, if I can help it. There we go. Released. Yeah, there's the oil. So... Oh, it stinks. <laughs> Just got to release that somehow. Down there without breaking the clips if I can help it. What's that one? Yeah, there we go. So I think the actual pump is fine. Just slide that off there. I think the damage is in here somehow. It's not all one piece, but it is. Maybe not. Hmm. Okay, so I think the cylinder head is at fault. It's all one piece. It can't be taken apart. So I'm going to see if I can actually get a new one of these as a complete thing. Because there's nothing there. A couple of O-rings, but there's nothing there to actually leak. All the actual pistons look fine. I don't want to leak too much oil out. Um, I'll just put the motor in a pot Oop, just to keep it upright like that. The grease they're using these really smells, <laughs> stinks awful. So I'll keep that to one side. I'll probably just pop that back in the pot there, like so. And then I'm going to have a quick look online. Let's have a quick look now on my computer here in my workshop, see if we can find this actual part. I'm just online now, and I think that it's pretty much bang on. I'll check the actual part as well, make sure it actually does fit. But this is from Ransom Spares. I did try eSpares, 
um, which I usually get a lot of my stuff from. But there's two weeks waiting list for that part, so I want to get it from them. So I want to get this up and running as soon as I can. So I'm going to get this ordered tonight, and then hopefully in a couple of days we'll start the video again and uh, start building it back up. Hopefully it doesn't leak. So we are two days later and the parts finally arrived. There's the part number there, Nobody who's interested. It's an original Karcher part. Let's open up and have a look. That's one side. And yeah, looks right. The old one there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's see if we can remember how to put all this back together, which I think should be pretty straightforward. Just reversal of how we took it apart. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this should uh, fix the problem. Right, so I've made a little bit of progress. It's all gone back together quite nicely. Got the actual outer case back on, or the inner case, I should say, the waterproof case. Um, I'm glad I took a photo of the actual wiring how it went back together because when I came back to put it together I had no idea which way I went where. So before I actually do put it in the case I think I'm going to clean the case up a little bit just with a little bit of glass cleaner spray and a bit of cloth just to uh, neaten it all up inside and the outside a little bit just to make it look like we actually care a little bit <laughs> and uh, hopefully when it's all back together it should work. There we go, all built back up. Putting it together was a hell of a lot easier than taking it apart and I didn't have any parts left over which is always a good thing. So now is the moment of truth. It looks clean, it looks shiny, it looks like it's going to work. We're going to hook up the uh, outlet pipe, put some water to it, put some power to it. Right, moment of truth. I'm really annoyed. Um, I'm going to have to strip it all down again and have another look and see which part it's still leaking from. Okay, so I've actually hooked the uh, carter up to the water now, and if you look, is it coming out of that? It's actually coming out of this joint here. So I may have cracked that when I took it off it wasn't leaking from there before. So I'll order one of these and see you back again in a couple of days. Okay so it's been approximately about a week and the part has actually turned up. There's a the part number there if you need it. And it comes with a new little o-ring and some silicone grease. But I think it was my fault when I actually took this apart because I think I actually took it apart a little bit too rough. I didn't actually uh, take any care taking it apart and I think I cracked this area here and that's where the actual water is coming from. So if you are taking these apart I do advise be a bit more careful than me and not so ham-fisted and just take a little bit of care taking it apart. So I think what I'm going to do now is I remove the actual rubber gasket here, the rubber o-ring here, put a little bit of grease on and we'll see if we can get the new part to fit. I'll rebuild it and then test it again and fingers crossed it doesn't leak. So I'm just going to use a dental pick on this rubber ring here. No ring. Let's get the old one off. Okay. Put that to one side anyway. So I could probably keep I might be able to get that off there and keep that part. The actual clamp. So a uh, a 25 quid, 30 quid job has now cost me 50 quid in parts. It's still cheaper than a new uh, pressure washer, I suppose. Right, I'm getting a little bit of grease. I'm giving quite a bit of grease in there. It's quite a little bit. So I put a little bit on there. 
around the ring, I think. Get out of the pot. There we go. Yeah, I had to wait a little bit longer for this uh, part to come into stock. Usually it's next day service, but this took a little bit longer. I suppose because this is the actual outlet, it's going to be under higher pressure than the inlet. That's probably why they give you the grease. I'm assuming anyway. Let's whack a bit in there anyway. Just be on the old safe side. Nice little blob in there. Mm, smells like grease. <laughs> so now, it goes on there like that, I think. That should just lock, which it has done. Perfect. So now, all being well, we can rebuild this, and it should all be perfect and not leak. Right, we're back outside, water's all connected, power is on, it's not pulsing and there's no water leaking out, so let's give it a quick test. Perfect, all fixed, all sorted. So we are all uh, ready to be put away and now I'm going to put this away uh, in the garage in a cupboard and I'm going to try and insulate the actual cupboard so it doesn't actually get any frost to it because I think that's basically what happened was the frost actually uh, got in and cracked the actual um, manifold here along this line here there's a crack along there I had a good look uh, with a magnifying glass and I think there's a crack along this manifold here so that's where the water was coming from initially and then when I repaired that and took this part off I took it off a little bit too urgently and I think I cracked that part here. Um, so basically it cost me around £50 in parts to repair the actual uh, K2, which is not bad really. It's still you know, a little bit of labour, a little bit of uh, time and effort, a little bit of research and you can save yourself some money and it's pretty much the ultimate recycling is by keeping something going. Um, I've had this for about five years now so hopefully it should last another five six years so if you've liked this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one